All right, we've got Nintendo Power number 86 this issue for July of 1996, just three or four, depending on how you count it, months away from the launch of the Nintendo 64. We're continuing to build up to that system, so we have not as many issue, games this issue to talk about as we would normally, but we do have some actual titles this issue to talk about. Yay! Our cover of this issue isn't one particular game, instead it's 3D art of Mario, Bowser, Kirby, and the DK crew. In the letters column, we have some praise for the rebranding of Nintendo Power Magazine, but what I really want to call attention to more than anything else this issue is we have some Tales of Fantasia envelope art. Considering this game, again, as of this point, has not received a proper United States English translation. This is basically getting its first real wide awareness outside of magazines that cover import games like your, um, like the import columns of your EGM and your diehard game fans and that sort of thing. That's a pretty significant bit there. Beyond just, oh, anime is getting more mainstream, here's this game as an anime art style, here's anime fan art, that's actually fairly notable. In the power chart, we have Earthbound, Mortal Kombat 3, Civilization, and Secret of Evermore returning to the Super Nintendo ranking. And we have a new arrival on the Game Boy chart with Kirby's Block Ball. The quote-unquote genre ranking this issue is getting a little more loose with its um, qualifications as far as to get listed by having games based on TV shows. Seems appropriate that we're doing this issue right after E3 of uh, 2021 because this issue is the issue after E3 1996. A Nintendo showcased the N64 at E3 that year, so there's coverage. There's also additional discussion of the launch titles that we've covered several times previously, though they don't mention the developers and publishers who aren't staying with the platform and we won't be seeing in the future. So they're I mean, they don't mention Square, but they don't mention that Square's not coming back for the new for the new console. Uh they are also desperately trying to hide the fact that the Game Boy, or sorry, others to say the Virtual Boy, absolutely failed by praising the price drop of the Virtual Boy to under $90. Yeah. We have a preview of Kirby Superstar with notes on several of the game's mini campaigns. This game is the cover title for next issue, so I'm going to save it until then. We have a preview of Tetris Attack, a reskin and rebranding of Panel de Pawn, a puzzle game which has very little in common with the, you know, Tetris puzzle formula, but is still a interesting looking puzzle game in its own right. And we have some notes on the game's game mechanics. Tetris Attack is a incredibly solid puzzle game of your match three plus variety. Indeed, I'm actually kind of bummed that the game is so or at least the US release of this game had the Tetris branding so crudely shoved on top of it because to a degree that has prevented it from getting a real proper re-release after the fact because you've got to deal with the Tetris trademark which they're less likely to play ball with considering that Tetris pieces are sure not appearing in this game. This is a good enough puzzle game that I honestly think that it could have stood on its own without putting the Tetris label on it to draw in the eye of consumers, and the thought that T Nintendo would always have a certain degree of Tetris exclusivity, when at this point we've had uh, Tetris ports come out for, like, the CDI, and yes, Nintendo had a relationship with Philips, but still, and I believe also the 3DO. If I have a complaint about this game at all, is that more could be done in some manner or another to telepath the garbage patterns that happen when you or your opponent um, match a certain number of tiles, and so you get garbage pieces dropped out the opponent's side. One of the main ways you set up combos in this type of game, whether it's, again, uh, Panel to Pawn, or your Puzzle Fighter, or that sort of thing, 
is recognizing garbage patterns and uh, what format they're going to be and setting stuff up in response to that to counter their garbage with your own matches that set up big combos. Yeah. And this doesn't really do that. Um, the garbage blocks turn into different colored pattern pieces once you do a match underneath it, but you don't necessarily have any awareness in advance of the match to know what pattern that takes. Again, I suppose the Puzzle Fighter, which you know going into it what each character's garbage pattern is, it's right there on the character select screen. We get a preview of the Game Boy port of Waterworld, which is a port of the Super Nintendo version, and I couldn't and I couldn't really find much of whether or not this game like actually came out. I think I was able to find a, a ROM, but it may also be a prototype. Unclear. We also have a review of Dragon Hopper, a game for the Virtual Boy that is never released. Um, prototype ROMs did get out and they were dumped. But, again, I'm not really covering the Virtual Boy on this, so I can give, give this a pass. We have some more preview coverage of the N64 with a more dialed down, or I should say drilled down, preview of Pilot Wing 64, covering some of the different level environments of the game and the different types of vehicles you can play. In particular, focus given to the Auto Gyro and the Rocket Belt. There's a guide for Bassmaster's Classic Pro Edition, which is basically doing the Super Street Fighter thing, or not so much Street Fighter Turbo, but the Super Street Fighter thing, to the Bassmaster's Classic, with some new lakes, new lures, that sort of stuff. I've never really felt qualified to review these games. They have a level of obtuseness to them with what lures to use, with what fish... Even with the guide information here with the maps, it still makes it kind of a hassle, especially since also there's a time pressure here because it's trying to do the arcade experience thing with the game. When I have enjoyed video game fishing experiences, I have also generally enjoyed them where they've had the sense of pace to them that comes with more general fishing with your... For example, Final Fantasy XV fishing, that sort of thing. And the guide has good information to help with some of the difficulties I have with, the, with this type of game, in terms of success, lures, knowing where to go, that sort of thing. The time pressure that is intrinsic to this genre the, of the arcade fishing game is a significant barrier to entry for me, so I'm giving this one a miss. In the classified information column, we have a whole bunch of useful tips for Final Fantasy III, but in my opinion, the most useful code this issue is a invulnerability code for MechWarrior 3050, which helps you deal with that whole endlessly respawning enemies problem. A whole bunch more Super Nintendo games are getting reprinted as budget releases as the Super Nintendo is approaching the end of its published life. A particular note of the games covered this issue is... Mega Man X, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest, NCAA Basketball, Street Fighter II Turbo, and F-Zero. Of those, F-Zero gets the most coverage, with the track notes for the game's tracks basically getting reprinted with some different background layout from way back in the earlier 90s when the game first came out. In Epic Center News, we have some additional information on the European release of Terranigma. Also, if you want to learn some more about that one, if you are a, if you back the Acts of the Blood God Patreon, a different Patreon which I back, they covered that on a past episode of their um, of one of, of their video game book club bonus podcasts. Worth checking out. We have some coverage of Eye of the Beholder for the Super Nintendo, with a bunch of lower levels of the dungeon, along with some general party composition notes. And I reviewed that game all the way back in episode 96. That's almost... Oh, boy. Um, 
that's, let's say, 22 episodes ago. So I'll be skipping the return visit to Undermountain this time. We have some more coverage of Super Nintendo import JRPGs with the other big Super Nintendo import RPG from Wolf Team Alumni with Star Ocean. And this one has more of a science fiction take. And unlike uh, Tales of Fantasia, this one has actually received very frequent U.S. releases as opposed to being buried by its publisher. So the Star Ocean First Departure release is available from, among other places, on the PSP, uh, digitally through the, through the online store, I believe, and also on the PlayStation 4, which means thus PlayStation 5, and the Nintendo Switch. So you have plenty of ways to play this legally. Though also with some additional voice acting and cutscenes and all that sort of fun stuff. We have a continuation of the strategy guide for Sword of Hope 2 on the Game Boy. And in the Epic Strategy column, we have a whole bunch more tips for Breath of Fire 2, including some information on how to get the good ending, along with various side quests. Moving on to, to our Game Boy title of the issue, we have the Marvel Valiant crossover game for the Game Boy, Iron Man XO Manowar with the console releases coming out for the Saturn and PlayStation 1. I'm kind of surprised we didn't get anything coming out of this in the comics. We never got a Marvel Valiant crossover book that I'm aware of. Near as I can tell, this exists basically because Acclaim had the Marvel video game license, and Acclaim also owned Valiant. And because Acclaim didn't have any weren't able to leverage this into anything further with Marvel. We didn't get much beyond that. I will admit I have not played the PlayStation or Saturn versions of this game, so I can't speak to how this game controls in comparison with those. This game is a strictly 2D platforming with a side of run and gun affair, and it is an awkward mess to play, particularly when it comes to shooting at mid-air enemies. Additionally, some of the levels can be exhaustingly large, which is awkward and unpleasant for a game on a handheld platform, and is aggravated by the fact that the controls don't really give you a way to look up and down in each level, which by comparison, you could do on lots of various plat other platformers on, not, not just like console, but other platformers on the Game Boy itself. You think there'd be some sort of navigation power-up or development to help you find your way around the levels and plan your actions. Maybe doing it, for example, where Exo Mana War can scroll the screen in various directions to plan ahead, while Iron Man is some sort of radar. But sadly, we have nothing like that, at least not on the Game Boy version. Again, things could be radically different on the PlayStation and the Saturn. In Counselor's Corner, we have a bunch of tips for Lufia 2 and for Earthbound. And in another N64 preview, the N64 is getting what I describe as the Mortal Kombat equivalent of Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, or th that or Super Street Fighter 2. Uh, basically with uh, Mortal Kombat 3 with a significantly expanded roster with a whole slew of new characters in the works. Many of whom are like, just brought back versions of characters from earlier games. Our last review of the issue is for The Brainies, a puzzle game from Titus that looks to be some sort of cross between, like, Adventures of Lolo and Lemmings, calling from the art in the issue. Well, getting it hands-on on the game, I'd say it probably actually plays something closer to a twist on Sokoban, in the sense that you are constantly moving and than trying to get your characters on particular blocks, with the side bit being that, or the, the twist-ish, the direct spin being that the characters will constantly move until they hit an obstacle, at which point they stop, with also there being obstacles in environments, which will redirect characters' movements. So you have to account for those as well. It's, it's fine. It's decent enough of a puzzle game. If I have a complaint, it's that considering the number of the puzzles in the game itself, there should be some form of password system if you're not doing game saves or unlimited continues, 
just so, you know, you don't hit episode uh, level 65 of all the puzzles and then run out of lives because you got stuck and have a game over. That sort of thing. That, that, that stuff like that's a pain and it's just mean to the player and don't do it. We have an article giving a bunch of notes for various final boss battles from all sorts of games and various across various genres. Like action games like Mega Man X3, fighting games like Killer Instinct, and role-playing games like Chrono Trigger. The only real also-ran in the now-playing column this issue is the strategy game War 3010. And in Packwatch, we have a preview of Robotech, Robotech Crystal Dreams for the N64, which is a game that was ultimately never released. My pick for this issue is Tetris Attack, or Panel de Pond, if you can't find a physical copy of the of the US release of this game. Either one will work fine. Um, Panel de Pond is also, as of this recording, available through a Nintendo Switch Online. So there's that option available too. It's There's text in the game, but you don't really need it. It's not like it's got a big story going on to it. Um... It's like it's a good, basic, fun puzzle game. And honestly, if you want to pick, try it out legally before picking it up and you've got a Switch, that's probably the best way to go. Next issue, we will have our feature coverage of Kirby Superstar. So look forward to that. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe, and also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>